she's great to work with. Yeah. Uh, yes, I've worked for her for 27 years. Yeah. And she says, make sure you talk to the guys because no one leaves here once they start here. It's a great place to work. That's right. Most of us, Steve's been here for 36 years and I've been here for 33 and Rex has been here for 28 there. So we've been here for quite a while. Then. So uh, the stuff's in the Smithsonian. People are still buying this stuff like for candy kettles. Candy kettles, apple butter kettles is a big business there. Yeah. A lot of people still make apple butters there. Uh, the cheese kettles there, they started making in uh, 1957, they started making smaller blocks of cheese, so we quit making the cheese kettles. But that's why they modernized, is to make those big cheese kettles. The thing was, when they put this machine in, the cheese kettle wouldn't fit on the machine. So if you lift up these boards, there's a hole underneath me here. Oh. This was all hand dug out. They so put the cheese around. kettle here, and it hung down into that hole. But nobody was tall enough to stand in the hole, so in 1912, they put this in and they would jump up here and swing down into the hole to make those cheese cakes. Okay, I tell you now, we're running out of time here, oh, so I, know. I gotta go. Too much in <laughs> I know, a lot going yeah, on here. So yeah. it took about 150 years to put this place together. So yeah. can I come back sometime if I come through Bucyrus? Sure. You, you welcome do. visitors? Oh yeah, all the time, sure. Okay, you hear that folks? Friday. If you wanna come yeah. out here and talk to this guy, this guy's got a lot to say, and he can tell you, talk you what, an hour? Uh, it takes about an hour to go through the shop there. Check yes. it out, man, that's cool. Yeah. We'll see you back okay. in Bucyrus right after this. intersection route 19 and route 100 we've got railroad tracks got a big old water tower the trains coming by and look at this Barney Fife's old car Mayberry RFT can you believe that and look behind me I got this old-time gas station Sinclair you know Sinclair is the one that had the dinosaurs on the pumps and all that well I understand this Bucyrus stop is a place called Carl's gas station I don't know a lot about it but once we go inside well you'll know as much as I do Well, you must be Carl, because what they call this one, Carl's Gas Station? Carl's Auto Service. Auto Service? Yeah. Well, I got to tell you something. You could call it a lot of things, because this place is a lot of, a lot <laughs> yeah, of different things, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of different it? things. It sure is, yeah. Man, this is unbelievable. You know, yeah. I, was make, I was making jokes about Barney Fife's car out, out, outside the there. The Ford? Yeah, yeah, up here it looks like it looks like uh, Mayberry Hill Barber Shop. Everyone's just hanging out, huh? Yeah, there's a barber chair. This is where all the guys just hang out? Yeah, don't you see them hanging around there? We'll get the barber chair here. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> that is great. Boy, this place is cleaned up and crazy, and you actually still fix cars here, too. Oh, yeah, every day. Yeah? yeah. So, yeah. so what we got going on here with these cars? Like I see, is this is this a 49? That's a 50. 50? 50 Ford. 50 Ford, and that's a convertible. Yep. Man. The one beside it is 57 Chevy. 57 Chevy. Now these babies here, they're, they're like as valuable as chicken teeth, right? Right, that's a 55 Chevy. That comes from North Carolina. 55 Chevy. And that's a 56 Ford convertible. That came from Dallas, Texas. I see so much crazy stuff in here. Like you have to spend a couple weeks in here to see everything. I mean, you, oh, got, yeah. you yeah. got matchbox cars up there too? Oh yeah, a lot of them, They're about 2,000 of them. 2,000 cars, yeah. trophies. I also saw some uh, signs in here that say Route 66 on them. So you ever traveled old Route 66? Route 66, yep, it was on that in the old Ford up here. In the old Ford? Yep. Look at that, Route 66, right here in Bucyrus. I gotta tell you, you come to some of these towns in Ohio, these old historical mm -hmm. towns, I never expected to find this here, Carl. <laughs> no, well, a lot of people don't. Yeah. We have quite a few of the tourism buses come in, yeah. and uh, they, they enjoy it a lot. Heck yeah. You Bring know what? back a lot of memories. You know, I like movies, and I think this car, I think I saw Sylvester Stallone driving a car like this. 49 Merc, yep, that's what he had. That was in the movie Cobra, <coughs> right? Yeah, Cobra. Yeah. So this is a 1949 car, but this was as luxurious as cars got in 49, I think. Oh, yeah, right. And a convertible, yeah. Yeah, there's a 49 chop door just like the one he had. Uh-huh. You know, that's a 55 Chevy convertible. 55 Chevy. 50, 55, 56 Chevys, they were sort of 50, similar, right? Right, yep. The only thing that changed was the uh, tail lights and the front uh -huh. fenders were a little bit different. Right. That's it. So, you know, I see you're a collector, but you're car crazy too, or at least your family is, because this car is a little, a little different than it's the others, huh? 71 Pontiac GT37. So that's almost like a GTO, huh? Right, about the same, the identical same car. Yeah. yeah. Boy, this is great looking. I see Elvis's picture back there. Do you also have yeah, a shrine Elvis, to Elvis, I yeah, heard? Yeah, we have an Elvis room here with a lot of the Elvis memorabilia. So 
when, when you start putting the yellows room together, how did it start? I mean, is it like a hobby going crazy? Uh, right. We just we just like the music, and then we started collecting, and we, that's where we ended up. <laughs> where did you get that? What's, a, is that a, what's that sparkly thing in that, the back? That came from Memphis, Tennessee, out of the theater down there yeah. in Memphis. Yeah. So you were a while. So are your friends as passionate about this, too? Because we oh, see yeah. all your buddies hanging yeah, out around here. Yeah, they do. Here. They enjoy it a lot. Yeah, right. It's sort of wild. You're yeah, here in D. Cyrus, and you hear the trains going by yeah. here. Train whistle, you got the big old water tower out there getting a little rusty and stuff. Oh, yeah. And you come in here and you're stepping back but in time. But you've seen the Barney car, huh? Yeah, I saw uh, the Barney car. How'd you get little, that? Uh, we uh, bought it over in Ashland, Ohio. And, uh, you're a been, wheeler dealer, aren't you? It's been sitting out there a long time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I also saw some, like, you got, like, uh, some, some booth seats, like diner yeah, seats, I guess. Like too. Wow. This is yeah, one the, cool place. You guys all relaxing over here today? Yeah, I'm look at the, <laughs> you're, you're, that's the boss right there. Oh, look at that. What's the doggy's name? Marley. Hey, Marley, how you doing? That's my wife, Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn, nice to see you. Did your husband ever come home? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Well, I got to tell you, if I had this place, I'd be hanging out here too. In fact, I'm going to go over here and sit down a little bit. As I ponder my continued trip here through Bucyrus, Ohio. <laughs> Carl, man, I had a good time here. Okay. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Thank you for stopping. This is a spot I've been looking forward to seeing. It's called Cooper's Mill. And I'm with Miriam Cooper. You must be related to the owner somehow, huh? I know him pretty well. Must be David? Yes. Your husband? My husband. I gotta tell you what, you have some beautiful stuff here. Oh, Check this you. out, folks. Check out all these different kind of jams like I've never seen before. Where, where did you get some of these flavors? How did, they, how did they come about? Well, the one is bumbleberry jam, and that came about because uh, we were in Pennsylvania one day and tried bumbleberry pie. And uh, we just decided that that would be a really great thing to make it in the jam. It's uh, uh, blackberries and red raspberries and rhubarb and apple in it. Wow, bumbleberry. And then I like this one too. This one sort of shakes me up a little. Corn yeah. cob jelly. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Corn and cup. also dandelions, another one that's very unusual. Dandelions, it's probably pretty popular. I always see, I always see like older people out picking dandelions for salads and stuff. Yes. So you make it in the jelly. Yes, we uh, use the bloom. No, just the bloom. Just the bloom. Oh, because they always pick just the leaves. Yeah. You right. guys should get together. You right. do great. So this is a big story. You've got cheese here. I saw. Who makes the fudge? Our son does. Yes. Dan. Dan. Mm -hmm. Dan, David, Mira, it's a nice little family business here, huh? Yes, and we have four daughters, too, that are in the business with us. And what kind of stuff do they do around here? Uh, two of them that work in the market here, one in the uh, wholesale department, and um, I guess that's it. Well, I saw some <laughs> gift items, I saw Christmas items, I saw seeds, you got seeds, you got all kinds of beautiful food stuff. Uh, there's there's Dan's fudge. What's, what's Dan's biggest seller? Uh, probably Rocky Road is one of them. Rocky Road. Or, uh, Marshmallows, yeah. nuts, that kind of stuff, yeah. chocolate, yeah. Yes, uh -huh. Hey, you know what? I want to show you something over here, too, that I really thought was crazy good. But there's a lot of good stuff here. I mean, and you, you guys make everything almost, huh? Well, we make the jam and jellies. How about the, uh, how about the uh, apple butter stuff? You yeah, make that, butter. too? Yes, we make apple butter. Look at this, guys. Check this out. I'm sorry to do that to you, Miriam, but look. We got fresh rhubarb frozen. We got blackberries frozen. We've got sliced peaches frozen. So, Miriam, what, what's this mean? That you're going to try to put yourself out of business so people can buy the fresh fruit and make it themselves? Well, we can do that if we, we can try it, all right? <laughs> they can try it. Well, I'm going to show them how hard it is because we're going to get a chance to go back in the, in the area where they're making that right. stuff right now, right? Right. Let's go, let's go check it out. All right. Okay, back in the day, this would be where Al Capone make his hooch. Back here in the laboratory factory, there's David. Hey, David. Yeah. How you doing? I talked to the boss, your wife. Yeah, you got it. She told me you're jamming back here. I'm jamming back here. We're doing a good job of it. You're jamming on the drums, the kettle yeah, drum. Yeah, so right. So this come from a picking company? This, this is a, this is a uh, Geiger kettle. There was two kettle works in Bucyrus when this was made. Oh, a little competition, huh? Yeah, there was competition. I knew Mr. Geiger and Mr. Picking both. Wow. Hey, uh, I saw all the different flavors back there. You make all these flavors here? Yeah, we make them all here. What's this one? 
This in here is seedless black raspberry jam. I was right about jamming then. Yeah, you got it right. Hey, I was peeking through the windows at you before, not to sound strange or anything, and I saw you looking through one of those uh, Star Trek. That's a refractometer. Well, what were you doing with that thing? Where, where it is it? Measures thing? the sugar content. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the when you get a thin film of the jelly. Oh, here it is, right jam. here. Yeah, there it is. You put a thin film of the product on the refractometer. This is hot stuff too, huh? Yeah, it's very hot and very dark. This is a hard one to read. And you hold it up to the light, and it bends the light rays. The higher the sugar, the more it bends the light rays. Wow. And the higher the, the sugar mass is bricks, called it's called bricks. This guy looks like Galileo star. Yeah, here, oh he? yeah, we have to check it out. So what's it going on? What's, how's, the, how's the seedless blackberry jam doing? It's doing quite well. We're just about 67 bricks. Yeah. 67% sugar, and that's just about where it needs to be. Then you put another machine and you jar it up. Put then labels we'll on it. Carry it over there and we'll jar it up. So what's happening now? Okay, they're uh, setting the canner so that we get the right amount measurement in each jar. And then when it gets to where they get it set right, then we'll just run them down the line. What's your favorite kind of uh, jam then? My favorite jam is black raspberry jelly, not jam. Oh, you said well, jam. That was the first one my, my grandmother taught me how to make when I was about 12 years old. I've made jelly ever since. Yes, you're a jelly man. I'm a jelly man from the beginning. Hey, I love the family affair. Papa, you got the kids, you got your wife Miriam, it's terrific. Yeah. Man, thanks for having us out at Cooper's Yeah, Mill. yeah I'm glad Appreciate to be it. here. Okay, we're going to continue our journey through Bucyrus, Ohio. Sort of a fun place, isn't it? Yeah, yes it is. Okay, you keep jamming, I'll see you later. Ah, great place to stop, take a breath, enjoy the beauty and the inspiration of the First Presbyterian Church of Bucyrus. A lovely building, a beautiful room, and you know there's a lot of history to talk about in this building also. Dating way back to the late 1800s, it's all about some dolls. Dolls built for missionaries, I think by missionaries, and Jennifer joins me right here. And uh, I see right here we have some pictures of some dolls that date way back, don't they? Yes, in 1885 the Women's Missionary Society began to to create a rag doll and sell it for one dollar each to raise money for a new church building. So it was a fundraiser? Yes. It's great. And, and they all look like they are hand painted, the faces, huh? Yes, they were painted, hand painted faces and these dolls were made from, uh, they were made from 1885 to 1913 and then they stopped being made for a period of 43 years. Uh -huh. This is These are dolls from the later era which started in 1956. Uh, they were made by uh, Edith Miller and the Women's Missionary Society. And uh -huh. These, this one has a darker color, so that was made in oil paints, but the, and the lighter color was made in, with acrylic paints. What's the, what's the head built out of? Uh, sailcloth or muslin stuffed, and they were painted as, as if decoupage, layer upon layer. Wow, and the clothes are really cool. Yes, the, the girl dolls all have handmade bonnets, booties, aprons, and dresses. Can and I reveal the petticoat there? Look at that. Oh, hand tatted lace. How cute is that? And I see around the corner here, you've really got a, a, a deep stash here, huh? Yes, we've got 24 dolls in here. These are among the oldest dolls that were made in the 1880s, and these are more of the modern dolls. Now, are some of these dolls floating around that you'd like to buy or have put in your museum? Well, how many of these dolls are there out there? There, there must be at least 4,000 because the lady that painted the faces, Alice Tooks, painted over 4,000 faces that we've recorded. Wow. Yes, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a uniform practice of recording this because the ladies didn't know they were going to do something and ended up to be famous. Well, when she started painting these, did she try to imitate what they did in the, in the early days? or Because these are almost 100 years old, the originals, right? Yes. Now, Alice painted her own eye, idea of eyes. You can tell her eyes look directly at you. And they're, the paintings from the earlier dolls were all taken from the one person would do the entire doll. Mm -hmm. Alice, however, it, they became an assembly line feature in 1956, and Alice would paint all the doll faces, and other people would be in charge of certain, uh, like stuffing the dolls, uh -huh. uh, sewing the doll, sewing the doll clothes. And so it was, and then certain ladies would be sales ladies that would take down the orders 
and deliver finished dolls. Well, what, so I, I see we have locks on the cases now. So I remember the original ones, the missionary, it was $1, right? Yes. So what, what would you value the dolls at today? Several hundred dollars each. One sold in mint condition on eBay for $2,100. Wow. Yes, and so it's, it's, they're valuable, and they're valuable as part of church history and glorifying God. So you take, you take care of these? Do you, have, do you have one for yourself at home? No, I don't have any of my own. Unfortunately, I didn't know about these until I joined the church in, in the 1990s. The last day they recorded sales the last year was 1984. So now you have all these dolls to take care of, and of course, so does the congregation. Yes, yeah, it's beautiful. Alone. I heard there's a lovely uh, uh, piece of work of art downstairs, a, a, a mural or something. Yes, Barbara Dolch painted that mural. She's she's in charge of helping with all the display work, and she did all these displays of the, okay. the early dolls. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go check that out. Barbara, this is something uh, the kids could get lost in this, couldn't they? Right, it's a happy room. <laughs> it's a very happy room. So I would take it, looking at the two by two animals, that this would be Noah. Mm -hmm. And what's, what's Noah's wife's name? Well, we don't know, so we call her Mrs. Noah. <laughs> I like that, Mrs. Noah. And look how happy they look, huh? Well, we think after 40 days and 40 nights in an ark out on the sea, bumping around somewhere, They've got to be happy by the time they put their foot on dry ground. Yeah. Hey, Barbara, when you got the idea to do this, uh, I know the church was built, the First Presbyterian Church here in Besides, was built in 1906. Mm -hmm. So right. this is right. sort of like, this is like a breath of springtime right. in here, isn't it's it? It's a renovation because old churches typically were dark yeah. in the basement room. And uh, they did some renovation a few years ago and they came to me in, well, it was in 2006 and asked me if I would do a mural. That's a hundred years later after they built yes, the church. Isn't that right, great? Right. And um, so, and it was, the whole room was my canvas. Yeah. I could do whatever, however I wanted to interpret it. What kind of paints did you use? This is acrylic. Uh-huh. Boy, the colors are so nice. Thank you. A little cardinal Thank there. You. Yeah, it looks great. How about the giraffe? So, so do, you have a, do you have a favorite pair of animals up here? Well, actually, the zebras, I have a zebra collection at home. Uh huh. And there, it's the black and white thing. You know, it, oh, it's that is just great. kind of a. So um, the kids come down here, they get lost in it, huh? Right, absolutely. I think the kid in me is getting lost in it. It's and, very and beautiful. Well, this was done for kids. Mm -hmm. And the idea was uh, to make them feel like they were walking into the pages mm -hmm. of a child's storybook. How long did it take so, you to do this? Uh, actual painting was 90 hours, and that's beside research and composition and showing it to the Building and Grounds Committee, approval, that sort of thing. But the actual painting took 90 hours. Oh, well, it's a beautiful piece of work, and they'll be enjoying it for maybe another 100 years. How we about that? So. We hope so. We hope so. Talk about too good to forget or throw away. How about yesterday's newspaper? Well, here we are at Advanced Paper Technology, and we are having some fun. I'm with Jeff here, who runs the place, and what is this giant mountain of scrap paper? It's uh, old newspapers that we recycle from, uh, you know, recycling centers. Okay, so, so the motto is, today's paper is tomorrow's product. That is correct. Okay, so he's loading it in there, and where's this thing going now? It's gonna go this way. We'll go this way. We're gonna go underneath this guy? Yep. Wow, this is great. This looks like my basement. Not quite. So what are we going to make out of this? Insulation? We're going to make cellulose insulation or a product that goes in the asphalt industry or the roof caning industry. Oh boy. After all the paper goes underneath a metal detector and it picks off